Hey there, Mr. Redder here. Welcome back to another episode of Reddit Podcast Stories, where today, a woman in a supermarket tried to eject me from my wheelchair and take it from me. I was at a supermarket called Shaw's in the rural town that I live in. It's just like any other store, but with a club that's supposed to make things cheaper. I had to go there for my favorite energy drink and dog food. I used my power chair because I was still feeling pretty weak after having been sick and I already have joint problems. While I was getting a pack of monster energy drinks and putting it under my seat, this random lady came up and pushed me and said, I need that chair more than you do because I'm older. Luckily, I was strapped in so nothing bad happened. Normally, I would have unstrapped to lift something heavy like the energy drinks. I told her to stop and she took my chair, insisting that I should use one of the scooters they provide in the store. I was stunned and said, this is my wheelchair, please leave me alone. She kept insisting that I couldn't use my own chair in the store and tried to take it from me. So I quickly moved away at full speed on my chair, leaving her behind on a slow store scooter. It was pretty ridiculous. I went to the service desk and explained what was going on. The woman was following me and making a loud fuss. It took her ages to reach the desk on that slow scooter. She was yelling about me not needing the chair and causing a scene. When the staff told her it wasn't store property and she couldn't take it from me, she suddenly asked about artichokes, acting like nothing had even happened. It was so bizarre. I made sure to avoid her for the rest of my time at the store because I didn't want any more trouble. Looking back, it was more funny than anything else. As for why she acted this way, I guess maybe she thought she wasn't allowed to buy what I had and that's why she was so insistent. It's still a strange situation to think about. Some people ask how I fit a flat of monster on my chair. Well, my chair has a rack under the seat where I put things and I also hang bags on the arms to carry stuff. I didn't call the police because I live in a small town and it's hard to get them to do much when you live somewhere like this. My Karen coworker demands I make her lunch. I have a habit of making my own meals to take to work simply because I love cooking and health related issues. So I started a new job in a new company three months ago and seeing me making my own lunch every day has gotten some attention and with that I was able to talk and mingle in a new environment. My colleagues tend to ask me things like recipes, how long did it take, and so on, just small questions. Everyone was okay except for this one girl from the same department with me, which I will name her Sally, 27, a junior designer. From the first day she saw my lunch, Sally has thrown in a lot of comments like how envious she is that I could cook my own meals, etc. It was fine until after one week later she started asking me questions like, So, when will you make me lunch? I was taken aback but I thought she was joking and waved it off with a smile and a nod. After that, at least once a week, Sally would ask me the same question again, and sometimes she'd even say things like, you still owe me a lunch made by you, or she'll whine about me not wanting to cook for her. I've kindly turned her down every time she brings up this issue. Last Monday, she offered to pay me if I make her lunch, for $3. I told her no again, and she was visibly upset. She told me it's not that hard to make her lunch since I'm already cooking for myself every day, single, and I'm being unsociable and unfriendly by not making her food. Since then, she's been passive aggressive towards me, as well as not willing to cooperate at work when I hand her new tasks. It's made me feel bad about it and I have no idea how to go about this. Should I have just made her lunch just to keep the peace? This feels horrible and I don't know how to deal with it. Edit. After reading all your comments, I think I'll try to talk to Sally about this. And if I can't get through to her, I'll have to talk to my supervisor about it. Not the jerk. Tell her you are under no obligation to cook for anyone. I also suggest registering a complaint with HR before she turns this into something else. OP. I've told her that before, but then she'll say things like, But your food looks so delicious. It's honestly driving me crazy, especially now that her attitude has flipped 180 degrees after I turned her down for three months. Am I the jerk for trying to open my room door at the doctor's office? I just had an embarrassing situation happen at my doctor's office just now and I need to know am I the jerk. I had a doctor's appointment today at 10 a.m. and an urgent dentist appointment at 11.30. My dentist is located about 45 minutes from where my doctor is, relevant to the story. It's also important to note that if you are even 5 minutes late for your doctor's appointment at this office, they won't see you. You have to be on time. This is common for most clinics though. I showed up for my doctor's appointment at 9.50 a.m. I pay my copay. The medical assistant showed me to a room, took my weight, blood pressure, heart rate, and temperature, let me know my doctor would be in shortly, and closed the door. My doctor is a good doctor, and she's thorough, and sometimes she goes over on her appointments. 
It's not uncommon for her to show up to the room 15 or 20 minutes late. It's not ideal, but I'm aware of it and try to plan accordingly. I waited 45 minutes for her to come in, but she never did. As I said above, I have a dentist appointment, so I decided to leave. I tried to open the door, but the doorknob is broken. It turns, but the latch doesn't move, so I'm literally stuck in the room. I tried the knob again and nothing. I tap on the door and no one comes. I jiggle the knob, nothing. I knock on the door and no one hears. So I try to get it to unlatch on my end by trying to push up on the knob and while at the same time trying to turn it quickly and trying to turn the knob while pulling the door towards me and also pushing it away from me. This made a lot of noise and somebody started yelling at me to stop from the other side of the door. They open the door and there are four of the staff looking at me like I'm unhinged. I apologized, said I had tried getting their attention by knocking but no one heard. All I got was, oh, we heard, we all heard, that was so unnecessary. Went to the front desk to ask for a refund for the copay since I wasn't seen and they're all still looking at me like I'm some crazy person. I don't know, it was very embarrassing. Yes, I was irritated that I waited for so long and no one came. I feel like that's a normal and natural reaction to a situation like this and this is a known issue with that doorknob. I've been trapped in that room before, but only for a minute. It needs to be fixed or replaced. Seems like a safety issue to me on top of everything else. And not just that, it's triggering for me to be in a situation like this. But was I acting crazy or yelling or pounding on the door or trying to break it down? No. I don't know what I could have done differently. Wait a few more minutes? Try knocking louder? I'm embarrassed and angry now, and I tried to talk to them when I was there, but I really had to get to my dentist appointment and I feel like trying to go back and explain myself is just going to be weird and awkward. So, am I the jerk? Not the jerk. Doorknob issue aside, they heard you trying to get out of the room and ignored you. What if you were having an emergency? Rude and dangerous behavior on their part. OP. Well, I don't know if they purposely ignored me. The space of me tapping on the door to when they finally opened it was maybe a minute and a half. So maybe they heard me and were just getting stuff together or something. It just kind of sounded like all of them were talking out in the hall though. I don't know. I can only guess. Not the jerk. This is entirely unacceptable for many reasons. First, anything beyond 10 minutes waiting needs to be addressed. Patient time is every bit as important as provider time, and while emergencies happen, the patient is entitled to be advised and to reschedule if necessary. They ought to give you a refund and apologize. Second, it's a fire hazard to have rooms that you can't get out of whether because they are locked or because the doorknob is faulty. I would report that to the local fire marshal. Finally, and this assumes you're in the US, there's a regulatory agency where you can file complaints. It's sometimes called a facility services complaint or something similar. I'd file a complaint. It goes without saying that you will need to find a new primary care provider, but you are hopefully already going to do that. Not one of them showed up for my birthday, not a single soul. I'm absolutely broken. The only reason I don't post this on my main account is because I don't want them to know how much they hurt me. I'm writing this one day after my birthday. This day was supposed to be special. I hoped it would be the first good day after a long while. A few months ago, my girlfriend broke up with me. This hit me hard and had a bad influence on my job. Now I don't know if I can make it through the test period and I'm so stressed out and my birthday party was one of the few things I was looking forward to. My plan was to start my celebration at a local pizzeria and let the guests choose from several options I had planned for the evening. For this reason, I arrived a little earlier because I still had a few things to discuss with the owners of the pizzeria. Everything was decorated and ready. I sat there and waited. When no one was there, five minutes after the party started, I called my friends one by one. No one answered their phones. I figured they were just late and I would just have to be patient. I sat there for about an hour kept calling my friends with no answer and kept an eye on the door, but no one showed up. Eventually, the waitress brought my pizza to the table, but I couldn't eat. I started to tear up and kept hoping that at least one of them would come through the door. At some point, I couldn't take it anymore, ran to the bathroom and started crying. After I had calmed down, I returned to the table and saw the waitress standing at the table. I sat down and just mumbled that I wanted to pay. She asked me if everything was okay. I tried to smile to give the impression that everything was okay, but of course she noticed that I wasn't feeling well. The pizzeria refunded my money, also for the pizza I had eaten. I ran home and tried to contact my parents in the meantime. My father didn't pick up the phone, but at least my mother did. I asked her if she wanted to come and see me and explained what had happened. She said she would like to, but didn't have the time. 
I spent yesterday evening just sitting at my computer and at least trying not to burst into tears, but it wasn't that easy because I saw some of my friends online playing the game. It wasn't even that they didn't have time, they just didn't want to spend it with me on my birthday, and they didn't even care enough about me to at least cancel so I wouldn't have had to wait for them. My mother offered to talk to me about it again today. She said she would call me, but she didn't, and when I tried to call her, she didn't answer. I guess I'm writing this because I'm desperate and just want someone to listen to me. The only people who were wishing me a happy birthday were my parents and the pizzeria staff. I mean, I was used to my brothers not remembering my birthday, but not my friends. That's a hard read. Really upsetting. I can only imagine how it felt. Maybe this is a sign that they're not your real friends. Delete them completely from everything. Pick yourself up, start fresh, and go out and meet some people. You can do this. We all know you can. Sometimes we just need a shove to make the jump. OP, having been there myself, trust me when I say there's no point keeping these people around to let you feel consistently crappy about yourself. It only builds distrust and poor self-esteem when you finally decide to make new friends. OP should start making new friends after working through their grief because I can assure them most of us would have loved to celebrate OP at the pizza party. This is the harsh truth. Your family and friends don't love you. Here's the second truth. There's nothing you can do to make them love you because they are abnormal. If you think about this and grieve, it will be easier for you to move on. Stop calling them. Stop expecting an explanation. Am I the jerk for throwing my food in the garbage instead of giving it to my daughter? What I did was wrong. I feel stupid. I kind of snapped, I guess. My husband and I have two daughters, Haley, who's 12, my stepdaughter, and two-month-old Hannah. Since I gave birth, up until two weeks ago, I couldn't keep down any food outside of crackers. It would just make me sick, which the doctor said was because of me adjusting to naturally feeding and that it was normal. So up until two weeks ago, every single hot meal I made was eaten 100% by Haley and my husband, though I still made myself a portion just in case. Haley always ate my portion before leaving the table. She would see it set out on a plate for me that I would try picking at, but as soon as she touched it, I would stop picking at it and she would just take over. I spoke to her about it a few times because I won't eat anything that another person has touched. It grosses me out. So she knew. She just didn't care to stop because it's not like you're going to eat it anyways. My husband has spoken up to her several times and ultimately told me that I just wasn't making enough food because Haley was still starving after eating her plate and second helpings. When I was finally able to keep food down again, I started making more dinner to combat the issue. Like, I made a big sheet pan of lasagna. Definitely should have been leftovers. But my husband had two helpings and the rest went to Haley because right after I made dinner, the baby was fussy and tired and ultimately needed to be fed. So I excused myself to the other room and when I came back a half hour later, Haley was eating the last portion out of the pan using her fingers. So she touched it and I wouldn't eat it. Or last night, I made five medium-sized chicken breasts. My husband had two, Haley had two, and I had one on my plate. I was eating it slowly so I wouldn't get sick. Haley ate her entire plate and then she said, You gonna eat that? And put her finger directly on my chicken. My husband sent her to her room, but ultimately I didn't eat it. She knew what she was doing. Then tonight, I made five cheeseburgers for them. I can't eat hamburger. And two hot dogs for myself. Again, I ended up having to feed the baby directly after finishing dinner. They had eaten by the time I was finished feeding the baby. I made myself up my two hot dogs and Haley reaches over and picks up the hot dog, bun and all, and flips it over, puts it back down and says, was just checking if the bread was moldy, and then looks up and sees me glaring at her and says, oops, sorry, forgot, guess you're not gonna eat that now, so I can have it if you want. I took my entire dinner, plate and all, and chucked it in the trash can and walked off. She starts crying to my husband about not meaning to upset me, and that she was just hungry. <laughs> She's always hungry from the sounds of it. My husband yelled at me for being childish and wasting food and left with his daughter. He said, Yeah, I get that it's annoying and I reprimanded her every single time, but you didn't have to stoop to her level. You're more childish than she is. Edit. It's not just dinner that this happens with. Even when I was eating nothing but crackers, she would still ask me for my food. She eats multiple snacks during the day, as well as big breakfasts and lunch. She's been to a nutritionist and she's healthy. She has a high metabolism and just constantly wants food, as well as bored eats. Never gains a pound though. She's 5 foot 2, 86 pounds. She's not overweight. She barely gains anything. 
Not the jerk, but your husband and stepdaughter are. She sounds trouble in some way. At 12, she should understand what she's doing and be able to control it, so my mind is she's touching your food to provoke you. I believe you are right to throw your food away. I wouldn't have touched it after she put her grubby hand in it. Your husband needs to deal with this little jerk. Is she jealous of the new baby? Not the jerk. She's not going to change and your husband isn't doing good parenting, so you have to adapt and change. Stop sitting where she can do this to your food. Stop fixing her plate. Make her do it herself. Change up how dinner is served. Put hers somewhere else while the adults eat at the table. Change up your schedule. Eat when she's not there or eat at different times than when she does. Figure out what food she hates and fix them. If she starts to reach out towards your food, yell at her as loud as you can. No! And squirt her with a squirt gun. <laughs> Treat her like the little unmannered, feral kid that she is. Just don't sit there and be a victim. Show this girl that you are in control. You're the adult and she's a kid. I've got a feeling we'll be reading one soon called Am I the jerk for squirting my stepdaughter with a squirt gun when she kept touching my food? Am I the jerk for boycotting my sister's wedding since she accused my wife of fraud? I, 35 male, come from an intellectually pretentious family. I married into a very blue-collar family. Throughout my adult life, my older sister, who's 38, has always disapproved of my partners. I met my wife when she was in college and I was in the Navy. My sister immediately disliked the bubbly and unfiltered college girl and determined my wife was untrustworthy and dragging me down. Four years ago, my wife suffered a traumatic brain injury. It occurred right around the time we conceived our second baby, so we chalked off the dizziness, headaches, and other symptoms to her pregnancy. Nearly a year postpartum, the symptoms hadn't improved, and she started scheduling medical appointments to get checked out. At this point, she was in the Navy. I was separated and in grad school. Over the next 18 or so months, my wife endured an endless slog appointments, tests, exams, more consultations, until it was finally determined that my wife had a rare neurological condition that to be honest, I don't fully understand. She was medically retired and classified as a disabled vet. During this whole process, my sister's way of being supportive was to tell me it's probably nothing and not to worry about it. This past weekend, I was chatting with my sister. My wife had gotten a holiday job helping deliver packages but called out on Black Friday to stay at her parents longer. My sister made a comment about my wife suddenly being sick when she doesn't feel like working and claimed my wife had done the same thing to get medically retired from the Navy. As is the habit in my family, I replied with equally snarky jabs, reminding my sister, who's a nephrologist, that my wife injured her head and not her kidneys and she doesn't know what she's talking about. My sister claimed it took too long because my wife was doctor shopping for the diagnosis she wanted. I told her if I got paid what she did to sit in an office and say, keep doing dialysis, I wouldn't have personal days either. I had confronted my sister and my mother in the past about their accusations that my wife was milking the system and needed to suck it up. After some very heated exchanges, they had gotten better about keeping their thoughts to themselves, a feat with my family, but this one pulled no punches. My sister is getting married in September and I told her unless she apologizes and admits she doesn't know anything about my wife's medical history, we won't be in attendance. Is boycotting my only sibling's wedding an overreaction? Am I the jerk for using choosing the wedding as the event not to attend when it is such an important day to her? Not the jerk, but why do you keep forcing your wife to be around these people? Your family isn't just pretentious, they're judgmental and unkind. Your wife doesn't deserve that. As someone with an invisible disability, I have so much sympathy for your wife. Getting approved for disability was a nightmare because I didn't have a common issue. I've seen specialists all over the US, they still don't fully understand what's happening. I genuinely wish that people who doubt situations like your wife's could spend a day in her or my shoes. If I suddenly felt well enough to sit in an office 8 to 10 hours a day, I'd not only surrender my disability, I'd pay it all back to focus on a career job, track important events, Get up early and not be so fatigued that I literally fall asleep standing up. Your sister's career is a luxury your college-educated wife lost. Your sister is awful. Instead of skipping the wedding, I'd say, show your wife some support and go no contact with these people who don't care enough to understand her reality. But maybe I'm just too close to the issue. Your whole premise that your wife isn't a faker is a bit undermined by the fact that you admit your wife called out from work on the busiest day of the year just to extend her vacation. Those are hardly the actions of an honest person. I don't know anything about your wife, aside from what you're telling me. However, you hardly paint a flattering image of her work ethic. Karen ruins my professional cookware. 
The problem started when my girlfriend moved in about two years ago. I'm a former professional chef with a great passion for food. Over the years, I've gotten myself a lot of kitchen equipment that's quite expensive. If it breaks, I won't be able to replace it for at least a couple of months that I take care of as if it's my little babies. I have knives, pots and pans that I've kept in pristine condition despite using some of them a lot for 10 years or more. I also have a bunch of cheap, low quality equipment in my kitchen that I call my crap pans. When she moved in, she asked me about them and why I don't just throw them away and I jokingly told her that I keep them in case I have people with me that I don't trust in my kitchen. Sometime after she moved in with me, I started noticing scratches in my non-stick pans, dents in my knife edges and deformations in my pots. I started observing my girlfriend when she was cooking and saw her cutting stuff with one of my Japanese chef knives directly on top of the stainless steel counter and I told her right away to use a cutting board. I've seen that when she's done with a pan, she puts it under running water to cool it down. She uses dishwashing soap in my cast iron pans and the list goes on. I've told her multiple times how to take care of the equipment and what and what not to do and pretty much every time I correct her, she gets annoyed. So last week I came home and to my horror, I saw my 5 liter cast iron pot filled up with water that had dishwasher soap in it. It's one of my favorite pots that I've seasoned over the course of 15 years. I snapped and told my girlfriend that she's not allowed to use my expensive equipment anymore and showed her the crap pans and I told her that those are the ones she's going to have to use in the future. She thought I overreacted, but I refused to budge. I'm getting tired of resharpening knives every other day and having to throw out pans that I've inherited from generations back because they got deformed or rusted beyond restoration. She reminded me of how I said the crap pans were for people that I don't trust and questioned whether I trust her or not, which I do, just not with my kitchen equipment. So please enlighten me. Am I the jerk for banning my girlfriend from using my kitchen equipment? I'm going to say not the jerk. I'm the same as you. I am a one-woman army in the kitchen, and I have some expensive knives and equipment that I've been gifted over the years. I learned how to take good care of them all. I do 99% of the cooking in my house, and my husband used to also accidentally mess up my stuff when he did. I told him to either do the right things to clean them, or to just leave it if he forgets how to use it and I'll take care of it. You explained how to properly clean and care for your stuff, and she isn't doing it. And on top of that, she's getting visibly annoyed when you remind her. She doesn't care about the stuff that you clearly do. Plus, it's not like you gave her no alternative. There are pots and pans and knives that she can still use. I think it's fine to have stuff that's just your own, for whatever reasons you want to have them. In this case, she's not respecting your stuff, so you get to have your own, and she has hers. Well, what do you think? Should OP let his girlfriend use his cookware or not? Please let us know. If Reddit boy scratched my Teflon, he'd need a new head. Am I the jerk for making my boyfriend do all of the chores? I, 30 female, run a small online business from home. November and December are my busiest times of the year when I make a lot of money that allows me to work less during the year. I've been doing this since I was 25, so I've got a decent idea of what I can and cannot do. And focusing on work only for one to two months is a sacrifice I'm willing to make for their chill rest of the year. This year, I've moved in with my boyfriend, male 35. Well, technically, he moved in with me because I own the house, so it was a no-brainer for him to move in with me. We split chores half and half. He works full-time, 37.5 hours a week. When he moved in, I had a talk with him, letting him know that I can't do any chores in November or December, and asked if he could pick up the slack because I'm physically unable to do any chores, as I can be working anywhere between 12 to 18 hours a day. I take a full January off to decompress. He said he doubted I worked that much, but we would see. I asked again in September and October to make sure that he was aware that I won't be doing anything. I meal prepped in advance, and I felt he kind of dismissed me. Mid-November, we had an argument about my chores not being done, and I reminded him of what I told him. He said that he thought I wasn't being serious and told me there's no way he'd do 100% of the chores because he's working too. I said, fine, don't do my chores. They can wait until I have time. That's how I was when I lived alone. No problem. I don't make much mess anyway. He wasn't happy, but dropped it. We haven't seen each other much because I've been working so much, but he's been more and more upset and blew up at me today regarding the chores. 
He said I had to have a better work-life balance and to grow up because the house was a mess. I told him if it was a mess, it was his fault because I barely leave my office. He called me a lazy jerk. I told him I didn't have time for arguing and I went back to working. He stood in front of my locked office door shouting how he couldn't believe I was being serious about not doing chores and it was a jerk move to leave it all up to him. He thinks I'm a major jerk for basically disappearing for two months and following through with not doing chores. Am I really the jerk for saying I won't do chores and following through with it? Not the jerk. Someone who called me a lazy jerk in my house wouldn't be living in it much longer. He called you a lazy jerk? That kind of disrespect and rudeness in a relationship would not fly with me and he'd be out. Not the jerk. Wow, your boyfriend is showing his true colors. Believe him. I know that right now you don't have time to rearrange your life, but once January comes around, you should give yourself the gift of losing the deadbeat boyfriend. For what it's worth, I'm married, and both me and my husband have gone through times where we had to pick up the slack for each other for whatever reason. And it's not always a work reason. There could be health issues, the birth of a child, travel, and a billion other things that come up. Your boyfriend is showing you that he will throw a fit and call you names whenever he needs to support you. This is bad, really bad. It should be a deal breaker. Everyone sucks here. You're a grown woman and can clean after yourself. Many people work crazy hours, and not just during two months of the year, but they keep their shared living spaces clean. Your boyfriend escalated it by calling you names, and he could have helped out more, especially knowing that you're stressed. I think you need to both sit down and have a conversation, or you may not be happy in a relationship in a month. The answers on here are funny. If the situation were switched and a man said this to his wife, everyone would be saying he is a jerk because she works too and chores should be shared. It should be the same in this other direction as well. She can take an hour or two and do chores. I work for an accounting firm and quite frequently work 14 to 16 hour days, not including commute, and I still keep up my end of the chores. Instead of sleeping in on Saturday or Sunday, I get up and catch up on chores. She can do the same. We get it, a woman hurt you. But no, she communicated perfectly, multiple times, set herself up for success, a 35-year-old freeloader who pays no bills and doesn't want to contribute at all is the jerk. Um, I am a woman. As I said, he's not taking advantage of her. He's complying with their agreement. She can still do her part. She might not do it every day, but she can give up an hour or two of sleep on the weekends to get it done. It's not rocket science. You know full well if a man would have made this post, people would be all over him saying, Oh, you expect her to do everything and clean up after you, blah, blah, blah. But when it is a woman posting that she is working a lot and can't do chores, then it's all good and fine. Talk about a double standard. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or her boyfriend? Please let us know. I love it when the minions on Reddit get into quarrels with one another. Six dirty dishes made me quit this place. Perhaps relevant. I opened this location as the assistant manager, took a long maternity leave, then returned as a shift lead. The GM is the same one I was assistant to. In August, the morning cook quit and we still haven't replaced him. I've been doing twice the work since then. The start of my shift is stressful because I set up the entire cook line alone. In 90 minutes, I do all this. Turn on all the equipment, turn on six of the eight fryers, clean the filter machine, filter the other two fryers and turn them on. Top of the fryers with fresh oil, stock up two stations with about 150 pounds of meat on each, set up ice bath and batter for both stations, Make and hot hold our buffalo sauce, temp all the fryers, start two new time control logs, set up sanitation water and hot soapy water, and have all of the fried chicken ready before we open. So drop about 20 minutes before open. Yesterday morning, I was five minutes late due to the snow. There were multiple containers of chicken that were half full or less, so I had to spend time consolidating them. There was also not a drop of batter in the house, so I had to make a whole batch, which takes at least five minutes. Finally, all our livers were spoiled, so I had to take those out to the dumpster and take them off the POS. Basically, about 15 minutes of not setting up the line. As I'm scrambling to finish the batter I made, the kitchen aide, Marta, tells me I need to do my dishes. I had dropped off a couple chicken containers, the pan that had the spoiled livers, a bowl, and two whisks. She was training one of the line cooks in kitchen aid duties, so there was an extra person. This means she had less to do, and was doing dishes immediately when they came to the dish pit. 
As I'm rushing to open the line alone, I saw her just stand around watching the trainee. I clarified three times that she was talking about me. I was so taken aback for multiple reasons. One, she saw me hustling to do all this crap, and I was running behind. Two, I always contribute to the dishes. I even stay late sometimes to do all the dishes and clean the dish pit and put in fresh water before the evening kitchen aid comes. Three, I'm a shift lead, and she's supposedly my subordinate. I simply said, I'm too busy right now, to which she said, no, it doesn't matter. I told her I would do them later then and walked away to continue setting up the line. It's 25 minutes before open at this point and I'm only halfway set up. When I come back to get the second batter container, she stops me again. She tells me that dishes are all our responsibility and we have to collaborate as a team. Okay then, leave them aside and I'll do them later. She immediately says no. I have no problem doing the dishes. I actually genuinely enjoy it. It's soothing to take something dirty and make it clean. The water is warm and the soap smells nice. I just can't wash dishes and also set up the entire cook line while out on time crunch. The general manager, Bill, arrived a couple minutes after the altercation. Immediately discredited my thoughts and feelings on this. He kept repeating that it wasn't a big deal and that she didn't realize I was so busy. When I said that's not the point, her saying no and lecturing me about how to do my job is called insubordination. Bill actually rolled his eyes and said it's not that serious and to calm down. Marta did not need to apologize to me. She was passive aggressive the rest of the shift. She put me in danger by not calling out basic kitchen safety things like behind you with hot or oven opening behind you. She opened the oven door and it actually grazed my leg and she didn't say anything. Marta then argued with Bill about cutting the potatoes. He said she was cutting them too small. There was a back and forth, then later I checked and the potatoes were cut the way Marta likes them. She runs this store now apparently. I had to work the rest of the shift feeling like crap. Bill even told me I should apologize to Marta so things aren't awkward. I retorted that she should be written up for insubordination. Bill rolled his eyes again. At the end of my shift, I put in my resignation. I told him that he expects me to do all the manager duties, but I don't get the same respect. I let him know that he discredited everything I said and solidly defended Marta. I even let him know that I don't have a job lined up, but I just couldn't take the disrespect. I'm sad. I loved that job. I could see myself there another 10 or 20 years. But the way Bill handled that situation was the glass shattering moment. I am not valued. I am not respected. I work so hard and I have a supportive management style. I'm always helping wherever the work is needed. Being lectured on dishes is just straight up offensive to me and Bill did nothing to support me. Edit. Talk to the office manager of a dental office I used to work for and I start Monday. To those weirdos attacking me, weird that you assume my income supports my kid and my womanly emotions have now caused us to be on the streets. My husband makes more than enough for me to not even work and it's my choice to work. I quit with nothing lined up because I knew I'd have a new job in days and that I don't even need a job at all. Why do you people spread hate and anger like that? This is just a vent that a lot of people here can relate to, nothing more. It's not that serious. Calm down. Am I the jerk for making a scene when my son refused to dance with me? This all started when my son, Ben, graduated high school. There was a formal dance. I was very excited for the mother-son dance. Every time I brought it up, Ben would say he wasn't going to dance. I didn't take him seriously. I thought he was just being shy. When we got to the formal, everything was beautiful. But when it came time for the formal dances, he was nowhere to be seen. I approached my older daughter, Alice, and my husband, who I could see were talking and laughing. I asked if they had seen Ben, and they laughed and said he was going to go hide so he didn't have to dance. I was absolutely heartbroken. My son was literally hiding from me. I stood in the corner during the mother-son dance, watching all his friends dance with their moms. I couldn't take it, so I told my husband and daughter that I was walking home. When they got home, Ben walked right past me and went to his room to get ready for the after party. My daughter hugged me and went to go get ready, because she was driving Ben to the party. After our kids left, my husband and I had an argument about what had happened. He said he was appalled at my behavior and that I was acting like a kid. I said that the least Ben could have done was dance with his mother. He said that today was supposed to be about him and his accomplishment, not me. But in my opinion, today should have also been about celebrating the people who helped him get to where he is now. Things got quite heated 
and before going inside, my husband said that he wasn't going to force his son to do something he didn't want to do on his day. I was taken aback by this, so I just stayed on the porch, trying not to cry. I thought my husband would support me. Later, my daughter returns home and sees me crying. She gives me a hug and gave me a chocolate bar to try to cheer me up. If no one else, my daughter would be on my side. She danced with me at her graduation. She danced with her father. She understood how important this day was for me. I asked if she was on my side. She said something along the lines of, I know you're upset, but I don't know what you expected from him. It took a few days before we really spoke to each other again, and after a few weeks, everything went back to normal. Coming back to the present, my daughter recently got engaged. We were talking about it on a family FaceTime, and the topic of when Ben will get married came up. He said he was never going to get married because he doesn't want to deal with another round of dance drama. When I asked him to clarify, he said that he was obviously referring to his graduation. I was appalled at this attack. He won't get married because of me? I won't lie. I'm upset that he still does not want to dance with me, even at his own wedding. Now my husband is mad at me. My son refuses to answer my calls or texts. Am I the jerk for making a scene and starting an argument because my son never wants to dance with me? Edit. Okay, it appears as though the response is pretty unanimous and I have a lot of thinking to do. You're the jerk. When he said, I don't want to dance, that should have been the end of the story. It sounds like you walk over his boundaries often and that was one of the first times he's spoken up to you about it. You're going to be a very interesting mother-in-law. I don't understand why he couldn't have had just one dance with his mom for the son and mother dance while all of his other classmates did. Was he too cool to dance with his mom? I'm pretty sure every teenager feels that way. But the others somehow managed to make it through one dance with their moms. Hopefully he will be really embarrassed for humiliating you this way. I'm not going to lie. All these you're the jerk comments are a little harsh. I do agree with the son having the right to say no to the dance, but it is a little harsh. His mom was excited for this dance. I feel for her too. As someone with a husband that refuses to dance for anything, even weddings, I sympathize. I'm sorry that this experience hurt you, OP. I don't think you're the jerk, but nor is your son. It just sucks. No jerks here. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or her son? Please let us know. If Reddit boy wanted to dance with me, he'd need a new... I know, I know. I'd need a new head. Uh, I was just going to say you'd need a new pair of shoes. Those things have been falling apart for the last three years. Do this next. Tap here on your screen to come see our new podcast playlist, where you'll find thousands of hours of the best stories you've ever heard. Or tap the one on the right. That episode is specifically just for you, based on other videos you've enjoyed the most.